Welcome to our lecture online. Now here's another practical application of triple integrals. We're trying to find the centroid of a semispherical shape. So here we have a semisphere. Notice we're trying to find the centroid or center mass with respect to the xy plane. So this is sitting on top of the xy plane and, move, and going upward into the z direction. So any particular volume element, let's take this one right here, dv, which in uh, spherical coordinates can be said to be rho squared times sine of phi d rho d theta d phi. And the distance to that from the xy plane, we'll call that z, and I'll put a little squiggly line on it, which means that is the center of mass of that little volume element. And notice if we reference that to the angle phi with respect to the z-axis, then this angle here, right there, is equal to this angle right here. And so this, if we move that across over here, we can see that that would make z adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse rho, so the height z can be expressed in terms of the angle phi as rho times the cosine of phi. So then what we get here is that the definition of the center mass or the centroid of an object is equal to the triple integral of the distance from the reference plane or reference axis to the volume element, that's the z with a little squiggly on it, that's rho cosine phi, times the volume element, we do a triple integral over that, and we divide it by the triple integral of dv, which is basically the volume of the object that we're looking at. In this case, since it's a semi-sphere, the volume of the semi-sphere is simply 2 thirds pi r cubed, which is half of 4 thirds pi r cubed. But we still have to integrate the numerator here, so we have the distance to our volume element, and then we have the volume element right here. So we have to integrate that over rho, over theta, and over phi, and we'll do it in that order. So first we'll, we first we'll integrate it over rho, so we have rho cubed, and when we integrate that we get rho to the fourth power over 4. So this is equal to, we still have the double integral, over theta and over phi, but now we have rho to the fourth over 4 evaluated from 0 to, and let's see, do we have a radius here? Well, let's call the radius equal to r. So that means that the limits are from 0 to r, and because we used an r over here, and what we have left is we have a cosine of phi times a sine of phi, and that gives us a d theta and d phi that's left that we have to integrate over these two integrals. But here, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. When we plug in the upper limit, we get r to the fourth over 4. So this becomes equal to, oh, and don't forget, the whole thing is divided by 2 thirds pi r cubed. So that means we end up with r to the fourth over 4 divided by 2 thirds pi r cubed times the double integral of, we end up with, uh, let's see here, we have the cosine of phi times the sine of phi times d theta d phi. The next integral we're going to integrate is we're going to integrate over the angle d theta that's going to go all the way around, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi. So when we integrate that, we get, now let's simplify this a little bit. We have an r cubed and an r to the fourth. We have the 3 goes to the top and 2 times 4 becomes 8. So we have 3r over 8. 3r over 8. I believe that's correct. Let's see, 3 goes to the top. Yep, that looks good. Uh, how about the pi? We still have a pi in the denominator. So we have a pi right here. Okay, so now we're going to integrate over d theta, which becomes theta. That leaves us with a single integral from phi equals 0 to pi. Oh, no, pi over 2 because we only do a half a sphere, not a full sphere. So pi divided by 2. But d theta becomes theta, and that's evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And what we have left here is now we have the cosine of phi times the sine of phi, which of course would be difficult to integrate. We can actually change that to, let's see here, uh, let's see, we have the, the cosine, let's see here, if we have the sine of phi plus phi, that's equal to 2 times 
the sine of phi times the cosine of phi, sine of phi times the cosine of phi. I'm looking at my, uh, my identities for a moment here, so I can then say that the sine of phi times the cosine of phi is equal to one half the sine of two phi. All right, so I'm gonna rewrite this as one half the sine of two phi, d phi, which is a lot easier to integrate. And then I can evaluate this here, which is two pi, which goes to the outside. So this becomes equal to three r times two pi divided by eight pi. So that takes care of this. I evaluated the theta from zero to two pi. I get a two pi there. And then I have this remaining. I can take the one half out as well. So I'll take the one half out, one over two. And then I'm left with this, the integral from zero to pi over two of the sine of two phi d phi. All right. Again, let me simplify things a little bit more. We have a pi here and a pi there, and we have a two here and a two there, so now left with three r over eight times this integral right here. But I'm not quite ready to integrate yet because since I have a sine of two phi d phi, I need a two d phi here. That means I need another one half here to compensate for the extra two that I had to add there. So now I'm ready to integrate the sine of two phi. So this becomes equal to, we have three r divided by 16 now. Three r divided by two times eight, which is 16, times, when I integrate the sine of two phi, that becomes the negative cosine of two phi evaluated from zero to pi over two. So when I plug in the upper limit, pi over two times two phi, that becomes pi. The cosine of pi is negative one times a negative one, that gives me a positive one. So I end up with three r divided by 16 times a positive one. Then I'm gonna plug in the lower limit, the cosine of zero is one, but I'm supposed to, and then I have a negative one here from the negative, but since I'm subtracting it, this becomes plus one. So that's two times this, which is equal to three r divided by eight. And this is what we call the centroid of a semisphere relative to the plane of the base, which is in this case the xy plane. So the distance of the center mass along the z-axis from the xy plane is 3 eighths the radius. So this is the full radius, this is half the radius, so 3 eighths radius is about there. And so that means that the centroid is located 3 eighths the distance from the center here to the top of the semisphere. And that is how we calculate the centroid of an object like a semisphere. Good thing we know how to use triple integrals now.